the costume really when you step into it it doesn't form um it, it, it like is the last piece of the puzzle of the character almost we're here to give you the inside scoop on all of the costumes from shadow and bone whenever i play any kind of character the first moment that i put the the costume on is, is really big for me it informs so much about what you're doing so it's very important you see the fear in costuming in the show and there's nothing else that's like it it's this strong gritty raw kind of intense look you know that costume weighs like especially when wet that thing is like 300 pounds <laughs> It's like you're physically carrying a bear on your shoulder. So every time for me putting it all on, um, I really felt like I was here. Père vous and yeah, My journey with Shadow and Bone really began with costume. When we first meet uh, Nina, she's obviously undercover as a spy, as a Kalish mayor. The Wandering Isle is based on Ireland, so I suppose I had a bit of an affinity with these costumes. They made multiple costumes for Nina so that they could be distressed to various stages of her journey because by God, she is distressed um, for a good bit of her journey. Um, and I really loved that. They really stepped up and did some incredible things, like incredibly horrific things to our faces um, in terms of like making them frostbit, um, frostbitten, wind burned, icicles in our, in our eyebrows. They did this thing on our lips where it would make our lips peel. I'm just trying to stay warm. You should join me. I had a few fittings uh, with Wendy Partridge, who's the head of costume. She's amazing. Wendy wanted to put as much detail into these characters and, and um, everything that Lee Bardugo described in the book, she wanted to display. The first time I put on the captor, it was like stepping into Imperial Russia or something. And for me, it really helped me step into the shoes of the character. So Jenya's captor is as unique as she is and as unique as her powers. She's the only one with this kefta because she is the maiden to the queen and isolated from the other Grisha in that respect. Changing from Jenya's white kefta into the red kefta was a massive moment for both Jenya and, and myself. It was symbolic of her finally belonging because the white kefta signified that she was very much isolated and she didn't, she was a Grisha without a colour, essentially. Other than clashing with her hair, which she does remark on. I never did like this colour kind of red. Clashes with my hair. The red definitely gave her a sense of belonging. Be sure to catch all these looks in Shadow and Bone, streaming now only on Netflix.